to another edition of Telescope Man. You know, it's right after the holidays right now, and I know there's a lot of new beginner amateur astronomers out there that probably just got their first telescope for Christmas, and they're probably lost right now. So regardless of the type of first scope you might have bought, I wanted to do uh, kind of an annual review, for, especially for the beginners, uh, that have just got into the hobby on the types of telescopes that are available out there for folks to buy. So I wanted to do that in picture form for you. So let's take a few minutes and we're going to talk about the different types of telescopes that are out there and some of their good features and bad features of what you're going to see on the screen here in the next few minutes. And then toward the end, I'll give you a recommendation on what uh, a lot of us would give you uh, as a recommended first scope. What I'm going to try to show you is uh, what we would have recommended to you if you would have asked us before you went out there and bought one or a family member might have bought you one uh, that you now have and, and you're going to have to use. So let's talk about these for a few minutes. The first uh, scope that you see up there is what we would call a long tube refracting telescope. Refracting telescope. A refractor. Light enters the front of the tube, comes down through here, hits this little L-shaped device at the back, which is called a diagonal. A diagonal. It's got a little mirror in it. And it bounces the light up into the eyepiece in a, into a more comfortable position for viewing. This particular scope is setting on what looks like either an equatorial one, an EQ1, or an EQ2, possibly, uh, mount. And I can tell you right off the bat that this mount is not capable of handling this size telescope. And it's going to be very wobbly, shaky if you touch it. When you go to focus it, it's going to shake. And it might be a little frustrating for a beginner to use because it's going to have to be polar aligned first in order to be used. So normally we would not recommend this type of mount as your first mount. But we might recommend uh, this type of tube as your first telescope tube. It appears to be about a... 70 millimeter or 80 millimeter refractor, which would be fine for a first scope, but not necessarily on this particular mount. This particular mount is uh, makes it more difficult for a beginner to get interested in the hobby. It's a little frustrating. So that's the first type of scope that you're going to find out there is a refractor mounted on an equatorial mount similar to this one. The next type of refractor that you might come across is one that's similar to this one. Uh, notice it's a similar size to the one that you saw before. This happens to be a 70 millimeter. But it's setting on an altitude azimuth mount. In other words, the scope moves up and down or left and right, and it's very easy to point. We would probably recommend this particular scope as your first telescope. They're not very expensive. You're going to be able to get uh, some good views of some of the brighter objects in the night sky, and you can point this scope very easily just by turning it left or right. In fact, this particular mount that you're seeing here has gotten some good reviews as to being fairly stable out in this price range. So 
I could probably recommend this scope to you as your first scope if it was setting on this alt azimuth mount instead of this equatorial mount. This is what uh, causes me to hesitate a little bit in recommending uh, this scope to you is this the mount, not the tube. So again, this would probably make a nice little scope for you. This is called an Astro Master, just for your information. The next one that you might see on the internet or you might have been given is a small reflecting telescope on an equatorial mount. Again, this mount is going to frustrate you a little bit. So uh, if this was mounted on an alt azimuth type mount, I'd, I'd be a little happier with it rather than, than on this very small equatorial mount. In a few minutes, I'm going to show you an equatorial mount that could hold a reflecting or a refractor much steadier than this um, kind of a flimsy setup that you're looking at right here. Anyway, this is a reflecting telescope, and what happens is there's a mirror down here, and they come in various size mirrors. So you might see a 4.5 inch reflector or a 6 inch reflector or an 8 inch reflector. That's referring to the size of the mirror. And the bigger the mirror, the more resolving power this scope would have. So at some point it would get uh, too big to manage, but uh, for a beginner, something around 4.5 inches to 6 or 8 inches would be a great size uh, mirror to have in your reflecting telescope. So there's a mirror here. The light comes in here. It hits this mirror. There is a smaller mirror mounted right underneath this focuser here inside the tube. And the light comes in, bounces back, hits this mirror inside, and bounces out the eyepiece so that you can see the image. Uh, this particular one appears to have a red dot finder on it right here, a little red dot finder. And this would be a good beginner scope, but again, it's the mount that's going to frustrate you with this particular scope, okay? You're going to have to polar align this mount. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, polar alignment, just simply Google those two terms. Just Google polar a line, polar a line, and you can you'll get a lot of uh, links that describe how to polar a line an equatorial mount, which is what this is. So again, the tube is fine. I'm not too happy with the mount. I just know that some of you receive this type of a scope on these with these little fork arms and this little altitude adjustment rod on it and again you're going to find that it's real loose and shaky especially right here around this bolt that you tighten up on this little fork you can never quite get it tight enough to where this doesn't wobble back and forth Again, the tube is fine, but the mount, although it is alt as, it's an alt altitude azimuth mount, that's fine. But again, it's a pretty shaky altitude azimuth mount. So this this will frustrate you less so than the equatorial mount, but it's still going to be very shaky, uh, especially if you apply some uh, pretty good amount of magnification here uh, with an eyepiece. It's going to be very shaky for you. So I really can't recommend these types of mounts to you. But the tube is fine. It appears to be about a four and a half inch reflector. And again, it has a red dot finder on it. Now, if I was going to recommend a 
scope to you, one of the first ones I would recommend is a scope that looks like this. Uh, it's on a substantial base, again, altitude azimuth. So this scope simply spins around on a lazy Susan type base and the scope can go up or down. So you just simply point it and take a look at whatever you pointed it to. So it's very easy to manage. This is called a Dobsonian reflector. A Dobsonian whoops, reflector is what's, what this is called. And originally created by a fellow by the name of John Dobson, who you can look up on the internet and find out all about. Uh, very stable mount. Very easy to manage. Uh, these come in various sizes, four and a half inch, six inch, eight inch. And if you happen to have one of these uh, given to you, then they gave you one of the recommended scopes and you have one already. It's just a question of how big is the mirror that's on this reflector. Again, the light comes in here, it goes down to the bottom, hits a mirror bounces back, hits a secondary mirror right underneath this focuser inside this tube and bounces out through the focuser into the eyepiece so you can see the image that it's pointed at too in the sky. Very good beginner scope, very good. In fact, if you bought one of six or eight inches, uh, in diameter with a mirror that big, it'll probably serve you for years and years as a main telescope. So uh, this is a great buy for beginners as their first scope in either six inches or eight in preferably eight inches. Again, usually called uh, abbreviated as DOB or a DOB which is short for Dobsonian, which refers to this mount. And this is a reflecting telescope right here, Newt or Newtonian. Sometimes they say Newtonian. They're re referring to this tube. The next kind of scope that you're going to see, and again, here's a neat little scope that I could recommend to beginners. It has one flaw that I'll talk about. This is uh, what's called a Maksutov folded light telescope. And the reason it's folded light is the light takes two trips, comes in here, it hits a lens, goes back here, hits a mirror, comes back to the front, hits another mirror, and then bounces back again, and finally out the tube. So the light makes two trips through the tube before it gets out or else it would be twice as long so this causes the scope to be very small and if you look it's on a Dobsonian style mount similar to the scope I showed you a minute ago, a minute ago right here these mounts are very similar they work the same way okay the only difference is this one has two arms supporting the tube, whereas this one only has one. Uh, two are really not necessary because this scope is not very big and can easily be supported by the one arm. Again, it's going to be very stable mount for you. The only problem with this is that you can't point it exactly straight up because this impacts the base, the little diagonal. Remember, I talked about that, a little L-shaped diagonal with a mirror in it that simply uh, makes it easier to look through the scope, especially when it's pointed high in the sky. The only problem with this particular setup here is this does not clear the base, so you can't actually point it straight up. You can almost get straight up, but not quite. This, that's the only downfall to this particular setup sold by Orion. Other than that, this would make a great beginner scope. 
It's made to be set on a table. Uh, you just set it down on a table and line up your red dot finder with your main tube and point it and look through the eyepiece. Very easy to operate. Uh, it also has a little feature on the bottom. It's got a tripod bolt hole on the bottom of it. So you can get a uh, tripod and bolt this to the top of it. And then you don't need to be looking around for a nice stable table to put it on. You can just put it right on the top of the tripod. Orion sells these, and they're not very expensive, and I can recommend this scope to beginners. Let me back up for one minute and just show you something on here. Again, I told you this is a Maksutov-type telescope, and the way you can tell is by this really curved lens in the front. All you have to do is look at the front of it, and you can immediately tell this is a Maksutov design because of this curved lens in the front. Another type of folded light scope is uh, Schmidt Cassegrain, which is uh, this tube that you're looking at here. Again, it's a folded light scope, but notice the front corrector plate is very flat. Okay, it doesn't look anything like... Uh, this curved surface right here on the Maksutov that we talked about earlier. Uh, it's a flat, but it is a corrected piece of glass. It is not just simply a piece of glass. It's a lens with a coating on it, so you got to be very careful how you treat this front uh, glass on here. Anyway, the light enters here again. It hits a mirror in the back. It bounces back to a mirror that's right behind this uh, central little uh, collimating device. We're not going to get into that right now, but this is the three collimating screws that you see right here. You can look up collimation or collimating and SCT. SCT Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope, and you can find a whole lot of information on how to how these three screws work to adjust the optics. But it hits that mirror and then it bounces back again, hits the diagonal again, and bounces up through the eyepiece. So this scope and this scope are both folded light telescopes. And if the light wasn't folded again, this tube would be twice as long as it is now. So by folding it, the manufacturer makes the scope a whole lot more portable and easier to carry around. So this is called a Schmidt Cassegrain or a SCT. And some people even call them CATS, C-A-T for catadioptric, which means folded light, catadioptric. You can Google that and look that up again. But this is a very popular scope for both astrophotography and for visual. Used both ways. Little bit beyond a beginner scope. Uh, usually this is something that a beginner will upgrade to after they have purchased their first scope. Talking a little bit about mounts, personally I cannot recommend any equatorial mount similar to this that is under an what's called an EQ5. This is an EQ5 mount. Notice how substantial the metal is. The gearing's going to be a lot bigger. It can uh, has better motion in both axes than that little flimsy one that I showed you at the very beginning holding that refractor. And if you're going to get an EQ mount, make sure it's at least an EQ5. And then you're going to be happy with the motion, and it's going to be much more stable and less shaky.
than those uh, cheap ones that they try to put on a scope and sell you for $100. Uh, you're not getting very much mount for $100. So here's an EQ5, and that would be the smallest equatorial mount that I would recommend for you is an EQ5. Notice it's got different uh, a dovetail, what's called a dovetail saddle right here, and a corresponding dovetail bar that's mounted on the tube can be slipped into this saddle and tightened down, and so it can carry a variety of different types of tubes. So, you need to think a little bit about the mount that the tube is mounted to because the mount is just as important as the tube and a flimsy, shaky mount will just frustrate you. If I had to recommend one telescope, you know, we get a lot of uh, questions on astronomyforum.net you know, I have $150 to spend. Uh, what scope would you recommend? Well, there's really, personally, only one that I would recommend. And you're looking at uh, one of two versions of it. This is the Bushnell Aris, A-R-E-S, I believe is how they say it. It's got a four and a half inch mirror. It's a reflecting telescope. Light comes in here, hits the mirror, bounces back, hits the secondary, and bounces out the eyepiece. What's really neat about this scope is this: the supporting uh, rods slip down, and it becomes a very small package that you can easily carry outside. Again, it's mounted on one of those uh, alt azimuth, uh, Dobsonian style mounts. It's going to be very stable for you. And if um, only had $150 to spend, this would probably be the first scope I would buy. Is this in the states? We have to buy the Bushnell Aries. If you're overseas, you can buy the Skywatcher Heritage. 130p that's what this one is so again uh, it's probably very similar it could be the exact same scope i believe as the bushnell made by the same manufacturer uh, but this one again is called the skywatcher heritage 130p and notice how small of a package this folds down into you know you could actually backpack this scope out into the country uh, if you wanted to on a camping trip or something and just set it up. This would be a terrific scope uh, for a beginner as a beginner for a scope. And again, they're not very expensive. And uh, the optical light gathering power is four and a half inches versus that 70 millimeter refractor. So this is going to be able to pick up more dim objects in the night sky than that refractor will because it's got much more light gathering power uh, on this. In fact, I think this is a 130 millimeter. That might be very close to five inches in uh, diameter for this mirror. So I'd recommend the Heritage 130P or the Bushnell Aries, Aris, however you want to say that. They are very similar type scopes, probably the same one made by the same manufacturer. So with that said, I'd like to wish you clear skies, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night.